Hello, I'm going to show you how to make a, uh, what I call a Maggi, a magnetic Yagi. Uses a uh, N42 Gauss, you can use an N38, although N42 seems to work a little bit better. Um, uh, especially on a larger sphere like this, is a 1.17 inch N42 neodymium iron boron. You have a magnetic field finder. Um, plastic card, you can actually use another neodymium to locate the north and south sphere of the magnet, but that's important. You may not be able to see this, but as you rotate the magnet, it gives you a magnetic view of the north and south sphere of the uh, neodymium magnet itself. Right here I can tell, and at one of the lobes, the very bottom lobe, will show up as a tiny dot. You'll notice if you rotate it, you may not be able to see it in the video. You find that exact spot, mark it with a sharpie marker. Do the same thing with the other side, locating the north and south pole. I found that monofilament obviously does not work well because it is uh, uh, impedes too much the very slight and imperceptible movements of the neodymium sphere. What I found out is, believe it or not, the used nylon tape, or what I first used as a prototype, I've since used a, a finer nylon tape than this, and so you can use actually nylon thin tape dental floss to uh, actually make, to mount the uh, sphere. Well, like I said, it's important is that once you actually mount the sphere, you can use tape to mount the uh, nylon to the neodymium sphere, wrapping it directly around where you've marked the north and south pole of the neodymium sphere. But when you're finally done taping the nylon tape to the sphere, you need to make either the north or south pole, doesn't matter which, offset by between five to five to ten degrees, actually preferably eight if you can actually do it. So instead of sitting straight vertical north and south pole inside the box that you mounted on, it is sitting off kilter. Off kilter kind of like the earth sits as it spins around the earth. Actually it's uh, sitting at a procession uh, degree or as it rotates uh, around the sun, which of course gives us our seasons. I've noticed that when you actually offset it like that, it helps the magnet twist and turn better from the magnetic sphere of the Earth and the RFI and EMI that actually makes the magnet turn. These are the nylon, these are the iron filings, which are cheap drills. You can either make them yourself or you can buy a bottle of the iron filings for approximately $8. A uh, neodymium sphere, you can get a larger one like this for as cheap as $17. Like I said, you can use another magnet instead of a magnetic film to actually locate the north and south lobes of your neodymium that you're going to mount. Once you mount it in your box, you can use this. I found that 8 gauge and 12 gauge are, are a bit too thick and a bit too thin. This is 10 gauge vinyl coated copper wire you can get it at a hardware store. Once you mount your neodymium sphere, like I said, offset between 5 to 10 degrees from vertical. Once you mount it inside your box, whether it's cardboard, plastic, metal, it doesn't matter, not, preferably not metal, although copper seems to work fine. And once you mount it in there, remember it needs to be mounted offset between 5 to 10 degrees. And then you need to experiment, this is the hard part, not too hard, you just play with it, play with the director uh, elements, the, the smaller elements, and the reflector elements. Your magnet acts as a driven element, so you need to experiment with the director and the reflector, the larger element in the back. This pointed directly at the neodymium sphere, which is offset between 5 and 10 degrees. And then you can experiment with the box, turning it 360 degrees and see which direction the neodymium spins or twitches the most on. So this is your cheap method for producing at approximately $25, $15 or $17 for the neodymium sphere. Um, you can get a 3 quarter inch sphere neodymium. This is a 1.17 inch neodymium. I've been using 3 quarter inch. Uh, if you have a higher gauss one. The problem with the larger ones is that the larger neodymiums have a mass that is such that it is more heavy. It makes it harder for it to actually spin in the very light uh, EMI and RFI and gravitational forces that are causing it to spin. So a lighter weight neodymium actually works better like a 3 quarter inch neodymium than a 1.17 inch like this does unless the gauss rating is higher. So if you get a 1.17 like this and it's N38 gauss rating then it's too heavy for its magnetic rating and it will spin very little 
sometimes not at all because you have to experiment with the director and reflector elements of the Yagi that are directed at the neodymium inside the box that you mounted on. Like I said, the iron filing served no purpose whatsoever for it to spin other than the fuzz of the iron filings sticking out of the north and south spheres of the neodymium. You're able to see that, so it makes it much easier to see the uh, sphere spinning. Obviously, any sphere is hard to see spinning, especially if it's spinning very imperceptibly. So all the iron filings do is is a a neat factor for showing the lobes of a neodymium, but b a visualization aid to help you see the spinning of the sphere. I have intellectual property rights established for this as of four months ago. I'm trying to work with a buddy of mine as far as patenting this and selling it as a toy. Um, it does not take a whole lot of adjustment. Even putting it together a blind person, you will be able to cause it to spin some. But the point is getting the uh, getting the reflector and the driver elements at the appropriate length and also situating the box in such a position that you're getting the maximum amount of spin. That's what, as I said in video one, this neodymium sphere will spin and twitch to a greater or lesser degree 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, non-stop period. And it's fascinating, it's logical, it has to do with magnetics, RFI, EMI, and the, uh, the fields that the magnet are in that causes the magnet to turn. Just as it's attached to these iron filings, the magnetic sphere of the Earth and the radio frequency interference and all the EM spectrums are using a modified Yagi antenna, in this case a copper wire, although I could use copper loops or any other variant of Yagi antenna, directed at the neodymium sphere and cause it to spin in the field as it is very, very lightly and gently held by the nylon that is holding and suspending the neodymium. Once again, try, do not use fishing line. Fishing line causes the neodymium to be held too tautly. It needs to be held, needs to be held such that it is able to easily, with lowest amount of friction, act as a, as a near close to zero friction bearing as a gimbal for the neodymium to spin. So the monofilament, i.e. the fishing line, really does not work. It has to be a very fine, flat, you can't see it, but this is actually flat, nylon tape like this. And the quickest way to find that is uh, get some really cheap dental floss at your dollar store. This is basically what this is, is, is dental floss. I think actually right now I am using dental floss. So that's how you make your uh, perpetual motion art, or as they call it, the Maggi, the magnetic Yagi. Intellectual property rights established as of January 3rd, 2013 by myself, webmaster of cathodos.com, metaphysician, author, and uh, expert in uh, magnetism, which of course is still unknown to everybody. There is still no explanation for magnetism. The only logical, closest quote-unquote logical explanation for magnetism currently is that by the idiot Richard Feynman in his QED Strange Theory of Light and Matter where he calls magnetism, or action at distance specifically, he calls it uh, virtual photons. And of course saying that magnetism, or specifically as meant action at a distance, in other words what causes or what is able to happen between magnets uh, or action at a distance, virtual photons is the most absurd ridiculous explanation on the face of this earth. Most people don't know that, that nobody actually knows how action at a distance works. Einstein, although he himself was an idiot by genuine definition, called it spooky, quote unquote. There is no explanation for magnetism. But to make this cute little toy for 25 bucks, that's how you do it. And if you have any contacts, uh, call, email me at webmaster at cathodos.com. It is a metaphysical or philosoph uh, philosophy website dedicated to Neoplatonism and Neoplatonic metaphysics. Uh, unlike today, where we sci separate out science and religion, or specifically what as meant by Plato and Pythagoreans, science and metaphysics, the two are one thing. So any true philosopher, any true metaphysician in time has always been fascinated by science, as I myself have, because ultimately there is no distinction from the view of the greatest minds on earth, that being Plato, Pythagoras, Plotinus, the Neo-Pythagoreans, and the Neoplatonists. There is no distinction, no differentiation between physics and metaphysics. Hence my interest in magnetism. So, once again, that's how you create the Maggie and contact me at uh, webmastercathodos.com. And I hope you enjoy the toy because this isn't a scam, this isn't a fraud. It works and it will spin and twitch in, in perpetuity. 
without any input other than the Earth's magnetic uh, sphere and uh, RFI and EMI. So thank you very much.